what's wrong? Spoon Bakery. Look at the difference in size. Look at my one and look at Sam's one. Okay, first things first. The biggest question I keep getting about this M3 MacBook Air in Midnight is does it still get fingerprints? And the answer to that is yes. Apple have improved it since last time. The M2 version got completely covered really quickly and this M3 version is a little bit better. But if it's important to you, then this just isn't the color to go for. I actually think it's probably worth the trade-off because the color is so nice and I'm usually a silver MacBook user. I'm actually happy to kind of dust off the fingerprints because it's just such a good looking machine. But like I said, if it is important to you, go for something like a silver one, which doesn't show any at all. Anyway, let's get back on with the day in the life video. I'm not actually much of a traveler, so whenever I use my MacBook, I'm usually within reach of a power socket. So we decided to head to Exeter to do a bunch of creative stuff and to completely rely on the battery life of this new MacBook. The train takes us about an hour to get in and I use all of that time to answer emails and just check the schedule for what we had planned today. When we got to Exeter, we grabbed a cake from the amazing Exploding Bakery and then we headed out straight to film the intro to this video, which you've already seen. We've actually had this idea for a long time, so it was really nice to finally film it. And after we did that, Sam had to head off to a meeting so I decided to head to a local cafe called Sacred Grounds which was absolutely amazing it's so delicious there and I was alone so I managed to take a bunch of really nice photos of the area and the MacBook Air in situation which I usually find really awkward to do. I used the time there to edit a bunch of photos that I took on my iPhone so I just airdropped those over and I also took a look at the little intro to see if I could turn it into a reel which it looks like we can which is great. Okay so Sam's had to go for a meeting so I've come to a really nice cafe got a super nice coffee here and couldn't help myself I got a cookie as well just to kind of talk a little bit more about this Mac because I've actually stopped using my MacBook Pro and my Mac Studio to completely switch over to this MacBook Air. Last time I was using the MacBook Air it was the M2 and it was just a standard base model which was 8 gigabytes of RAM and you know 256 gig of storage and that actually held up fine but this time around this is the 16 gigabyte version and it's got a terabyte of storage. I'm going to keep an eye on things like memory pressure and RAM swap while I'm doing all of this because so far in terms of video editing and photo editing and all this stuff like that it seems to be holding up incredibly well and it's kind of only when you like really export it or really push it you see any kind of major difference we're also it's about 11 or half past 11 at the moment and the battery life level is at 90 percent even though i used it for quite a long time on the train which <laughs> just again shows how good the battery life is on these machines. And the other thing is as well, because I'm having to use SD cards and that sort of thing, I'm actually having to use a dongle again, which honestly I didn't miss. I was so used to using the SD card reader on my MacBook Pro to go back to having to take one around with you, kind of sucks. So yeah, I'm going to stay here and edit all of the footage from this morning. I'm also going to write loads more onto the newsletter. So if you're not following me in there, you can. I'll leave a link up here somewhere so you can check it out or in the description below. But yeah, I'm gonna sit here, get loads more work done and meet back up with Sam later. The one thing I forgot to mention as well earlier is it's actually really bright in here and I know the MacBook Air doesn't get as bright as the MacBook Pro but this is actually absolutely fine. I am on max brightness but it's plenty bright enough and I can't imagine things getting massively brighter than what they are in this cafe. I met back up with Sam and Rachel was around there too and we decided to have some lunch or we decided to argue about where we should go for lunch but we ended up going to Eat the Bird which is one of the many chicken places in Exeter and it was absolutely amazing. It's surprising that even though we all work together we rarely spend time together not doing kind of work stuff so we just enjoyed this. Me and Rachel got a little picture outside as well because we haven't taken any Kuroku photos next to each other recently. While we we're eating the staff were really interested in what we we're filming because Sam had his bigger rig with us and I finally managed to give out one of the new business cards which was really exciting and they seemed to like it too which was really nice. 
After that weird kind of post-lunch lull that we always seem to get, we decided we should get some photos of me with the MacBook. We found this really nice blue wool which kind of matched up with the midnight colour and my jacket and we also ended up seeing this cherry blossom and we had to take these photos in a really odd style because there was just so much rubbish around that tree. But it looked kind of nice. We then headed to another cafe and I spent all the time there having a nice it wasn't nice though, was it? We then went to another cafe and sat down and edited all the photos. And I've got to say here as well, using a MacBook Pro or a Mac Studio and comparing it to this MacBook Air for these sorts of tasks, there really is like little to no difference at all. Everything on this kind of top level or just doing kind of generic creative stuff doesn't feel any different at all. So it was nice to work at my normal workflow while editing these photos. This is a good time to bring up the weight of this thing because I've been carrying it around pretty much all day. And honestly, it's so much lighter than the MacBook Pro. It does make a surprising difference. Usually when I'm out and about, I have all my camera gear on me anyway, and I can usually tell if I've got a laptop in my bag. But with this, it really didn't feel too bad at all. It felt like I just had another lens or something else in my bag. So if weight is a really big thing for you, these are absolutely lighter. After sorting out all those photos, it was pretty much time to head home. So we got back on the train and typically this is when the sun came out and gave us some really nice chances for B-roll. So we got everything we possibly could. And I spent the rest of the time on the train typing up a newsletter, browsing the internet, and also just sorting out all the pictures from today because we got a bunch. As we're nearing the end of the journey, I actually checked the battery life because I've been on the MacBook for quite a long time today and it was at 66% which is pretty wild. It's getting on for about five o'clock now. So that's lasted all day, no problem at all. And I must admit, after I get home, my MacBook use pretty much went completely down. I was done for the day, but we did end up using the MacBook into the next day, which is today. And Sam has been editing the bulk of this video up until 12 o'clock. So he's been on Final Cut Pro and the battery has lasted all the way up until then for us to plug it back in. So it's pretty incredible that it lasted all of yesterday and then pretty much half of today. So the battery life really is excellent. Before tailing this video up, I did want to talk about one of the other bigger questions which came up, which is, should I get an M3 MacBook Air or should I get a MacBook Pro of some sort? And I think I've got an answer for all of that. The M3 MacBook Air is a fantastic computer if you just want to do general computing stuff and if you do kind of creative stuff occasionally. So if you open up Final Cut or if you're an amateur photographer or something like that, this is going to be absolutely perfect for you. And unfortunately, even the eight gigabytes of RAM version will probably still be enough. And no, I still don't think it's amazing that it starts at eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. That's horrible. However, I do think you should go for a MacBook Pro if the first thing you do when you open your MacBook is to go on creative apps. So if you're jumping into Final Cut or if you're jumping into Premiere Pro or any photo editor or any graphics based thing, then the Pro version is absolutely worth it. It's still nice and portable and you get a bunch more ports. And that's really how I think you should think about it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, pop a like. If you do have an M3 MacBook Air, I'd love to know how you're getting on with it. So let me know in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.